قطعنا النصر We went to Palestine for the olive harvest, staying and working in small rural towns and enjoying their vibrant culture. But with our own eyes we saw the injustices, their harvest being willfully obstructed, their crops being deliberately destroyed, their land and resources being stolen, and any objections, no matter how peaceful, met with military force and oppression. An entire nation is being imprisoned and crushed by a brutal occupation. I'd been to Jerusalem before on a Holy Land tour back in 1998, and at that time, to be honest, I was completely confused about the rights and wrongs of the situation there. But thanks to an enlightened tour leader, and what I saw, all that changed. In recent years, I've got involved in my local Palestine Solidarity Campaign group in my town of Bristol, and involved in distributing Zaytun Palestinian olive oil, the best fair trade product I can think of. Last autumn, an email arrived asking for volunteers to act as human shields for the olive harvest in Palestine, and I was lucky enough to be free and able to go. I took with me a pocket-sized home video camera and some basic microphones, and you may find some of the footage a bit variable, but I hope I succeed in giving some idea of the history, geography and politics of what is happening in Palestine, together with some basic tips for travellers, all woven into the story of our trip. For a start, arrange your trip with a faith or activist group. Meet up with the group out there, but travel alone. Dress smart, look affluent. I was nearly caught out because my luggage wasn't big enough. I posed as a Christian pilgrim tourist. Thousands are visiting Israel all the time. There have been rumours of spies even on the plains. Certainly, all visitors are routinely questioned when they arrive at Tel Aviv airport. Activists do sometimes get rumbled. Being held and questioned for hours, as has happened to friends of mine, is a bit of a chore. So don't tell them that you're going to Palestine and don't have any paperwork that links you with Palestine, even phone numbers. Email everything to yourself and collect it at an internet cafe later. Remember, they can even ask to see the pictures on your digital camera. So have a cover story or alternative itinerary ready. I don't mind admitting I was nervous about what I might be letting myself in for. The memories of Tom Herndl, Rachel Corey and others were in my mind, but I wouldn't want to put you off the next two weeks were to be the most empowering and enlightening experience of my whole life. So I hope this film encourages you to get more actively involved and maybe to make a similar trip for yourself sometime. At the end of the First World War, the European powers carved up the defeated Turkish Empire. Britain took over the land eventually to become Iraq, Jordan and Palestine. The first map shows the small Jewish enclaves up to 1946. The second map shows the UN partition plan of 1947. But by 1948, Jami had pushed the Palestinians back into the West Bank and the Gaza Strip and declared the State of Israel. The UN intervened and declared a ceasefire line known as the Green Line. Jerusalem was partitioned into the Jewish West and the Palestinian East. One of our party, whose family had been there on holiday in the early 1960s, remembers a wire fence running down a street to the west of the old city. But that's all gone now. Israel invaded the West Bank and the Gaza Strip in 1967 and has occupied it ever since. This occupation and the subsequent building of settlements throughout the occupied territories are in flagrant contravention of UN resolutions. The Oslo Agreement of the 1990s defines the areas A, B and C and fragments the West Bank into isolated Bantustans, which are now taking shape with the building of the Settleroni roads and the construction of the wall and fence. 
I couldn't help feeling like a chicken in one of those automated slaughterhouses being carried along on a conveyor belt towards the passport control. Well, contrary to all my fears, actually getting in through the airport was very straightforward last night. A few perfunctory questions as they stamp your passport or whatever, and then in. Even as a tourist walking around the old city of Jerusalem, you'll be surprised at the number of armed soldiers you'll see. They'll leave you well alone as tourists, but you'll see them hustling Palestinians. Remember, they are not just an armed police force, but actually an army of occupation suppressing a resentful population. Palestinians are also controlled by a system of passes, very reminiscent of South Africa under the apartheid regime. Palestinians living in East Jerusalem are under particular pressure, and adults from the West Bank aren't allowed to work or even to visit Jerusalem. And then there's the wall. The wall is a continuous barrier currently being built around the West Bank. In rural areas, it's a series of fences running along a strip of land up to 100 metres wide. And in urban areas, it's a massive concrete wall, up to 8 metres or 25 feet in height. It does follow the green line in places, but in many other places it snakes deep inside the West Bank, stealing land and access to vital water resources. Construction started just over three years ago, and the project is probably more than about half completed. The work involves demolition of hundreds of Palestinian homes, destruction of thousands of acres of agricultural land, severing of roads, water pipes and other services, and pens thousands of Palestinians and even entire towns into enclaves, isolating people from schools, health services and jobs, etc. Israel claims the wall is necessary for its security, but this is a pretext. In many places it cuts off Palestinians on the Israeli side. The final route may be 700 to 1,000 kilometres long. It currently steals about 10% of Palestinian land, but this could rise to some 50% if the Jordan Valley is also annexed. The wall has been ruled by the UN as illegal under international law. Although East Jerusalem is supposed to be the Palestinian capital, the Israelis are already building the wall to the east of the city. So on our journey north, we would have to cross the route of the wall at Kalandia Junction. Uh, this is the start of the wall, as you can see, and uh, we're going to play at uh, Kalandia, and uh, we have to get off this bus and uh, walk through the, uh, and find a taxi or another form of transport. Now, this is also the area where you change to go to Ramallah. 